one. Amen. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, The Lord, saying, Lord, behold, whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days, still in the same place where he was. Then after that, he said unto his disciples, let us go unto Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and thou goest thou thither again. And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, but he seeth the light of this world. But if any man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he after he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. The disciples said unto him, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought he had spoken of taking a rest. Then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. I just need, amen, praise the Lord. I just need the first four, amen, words in verse number 15, and I am glad. And I am glad. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you do me a favor for a few minutes, those of you, amen, who are who are still here with me? Uh, I want to give you the title that God gave me, and then we're gonna get out of here real quick. Amen. Don't move nowhere. We almost done. We in our clothes. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is not what I expected, but I'm still expecting. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to say that again. This is not what I expected, but I'm still expecting. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord Father. Bless you. Amen. Amen. This is, this is not what I expected, but I am still expecting. Um, okay, I believe it's in the book of Jeremiah. It's probably on some of y'all Bible covers that y'all got. It's Jeremiah 29 and 11. It says, it says to a people in captivity that even though you are in trouble, this trouble has a purpose behind it. God, God never puts you in trouble without purpose behind it. Whenever you don't obey God, God has to constrict you and put you in a place where you have a mind, where he has to get you into a place where you can submit to his will before he releases you. So in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, as I hasten to my close, your Bible will tell you that he said, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, that they are thoughts of good and not of evil. And this is the part I like. He said, I want to give you an expected end. Can you do me a favor for the first time tonight? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God wants you to know everything that's going to happen with you. So, so if you find yourself in this last hour confused and you, and you don't know the will of God, amen, praise the Lord, amen, praise the Lord, and you don't know what's going on in your life, amen, praise the Lord, maybe it is because you, you didn't fall in accordance with the second part of it. He said, you're going to know this expected end when you, when you seek me. He said, when you seek me, you're going to find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Right? Uh, 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 we are some of some of us are disappointed. Uh -oh, can I talk right here? Uh, from, from a wrong expectation. Uh, some of us might, might not be able to shout tonight because we were expecting the wrong thing. Amen. If anything that don't start right, you can't expect God to get in it and make it right. Uh, come on, please, Charlie. So, 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 so a wrong expectation. I got Bible for it. Your, your, your pastor has told you all, don't believe nobody if they can't give you Bible. He is the scripture for that hope deferred makes the heart sick. Uh, that, that means when you put your hope in something other than God, uh, it'll make you sick. Uh, and, and I want to talk to some of y'all that was once upon a time, uh, you was in love with somebody that now makes you uh, yeah, shut up. Because you're, oh, I got a witness now. I feel shut up because your hope, your hope left God and it entered into the relationship. I shut up. So, so what you have to do now is take 
name, I gotta take my hope back. And I gotta put it back in the hands of God. I love you and I trust you to a certain extent. But when I hope in God, let me get out of here. So when you read the book of John, the book of John is not a synoptic gospel. I'm on my way home, y'all. The book of John is not a synoptic gospel. The book of John is written by the apostle John, who was the youngest apostle. He was actually Jesus' little brother. Higher. And John had an intimate relationship with Jesus because in your Bible, your Bible will tell you that John was the one that leaned on Jesus' breast. He was, in other words, he was a worshiper. He knew, he knew the heart of God. He knew, he knew the heart of God. One of the reasons uh, that there is no expectation in the church uh, is because we are still looking for the hand of God. Amen. We are looking for God to do stuff for us. But God does stuff that is birthed out of his character. And see, there is a spirit of deception. If you ain't careful, you will start getting stuff and thinking that it's God. Because, because the only way you know God is by what he does. Can I say this on the teaching point before I get out of here? Who God is is more important than what he does. I, uh, let me say that. Uh, because, because if you know, if you only know God uh, by what he does, I, uh, when he stops doing what he do, uh, you're going to think he left you. Oh, but if you know God by who he is, uh, even if he don't do another thing, uh, I, uh, he's done enough already uh, I, uh, uh, for me to serve him. Uh, for the rest of my life. Come on, Charlie. So when we read the book of John, the book of John now tells us who we're dealing with. In the book of John, we are dealing with the Theos. The Theos, he is the Theos. And that word Theos means he's the God man. He has no old shot. He's a hundred percent God. Come on, Charlie. And he's a hundred percent man. He's God watered down. He's the word on wheels. And John said, about his birth because he was never born. I shot because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. I shot all things were created by him, and there was not nothing made. I shot. He said he was the light, and that light lighted all men that come unto the world. Then it takes a sidebar and it says there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He was not that light, Josh, but he was sent to bear witness of that light, that all men may come to the light. Then your Bible turns around and tells, I'm going to preach today, it turns around and tells you that he came to his own, and his own did not. I'm a pastor in these 17 years, I'm a what I have noticed, I'm a is that you are celebrated by the people that don't know you. I'm a is the enemy of destiny. Commonality is the enemy of miracles because I cannot get anything from you if I show up, if I claim to know you. So you know what happened? He came to his own and his own received him not, but as many as received them, he gave the power to become the sons of God. Who were not born after the flesh, nor after the will of man, but after the will of God. And the word became flesh. Don't forget, I thought sugar. And it dwelt among us. And we beheld him as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Then your Bible would tell you, I'm gonna get out of here. Your Bible would tell you, Prophet Shatera, that now in John chapter 2, now the Theos now invited to a wedding. And when we get to the wedding, we discover there is no wine. They didn't run out of wine. They didn't have no wine. They was having fake church. They was running and shouting with no Holy Ghost. They had a form of godliness, but they denied the power thereof. And see, under Hoshabah, and see, you know what Jesus is showing up at now? He's showing up in places that realize that they ain't got enough wine to do what he called to do. So y'all know the story. Y'all know the story. He begins to walk through his ministry. Then he leaves the wedding and then he goes to see a man by the name of Nicodemus. Y'all think I'm reading, I ain't reading, I got to read. The word is in me. So 
used to see a man by the name of Nicodemus, because I'm going to get these devils up off me. He goes to see a man by the name of Nicodemus, Pastor Bill Sapin. He comes to him by night because he was a leader. And when you are a leader with no praise, you have no insight. You can preach and not have insight. So because he didn't have insight, he had to go He had to come to Jesus and admit that the minister was irrelevant. He says, How my shanda? He said, My church sent me here to ask you, oh my, because we know that you come from God. Because can't nobody do I don't care how hard we fight you. We know you from God. Because can't nobody do what you do except God be with you. Oh my shanda. Oh be a shanda. Do me a favor for the whole shot. For the second time tonight, true way, Rhema, we almost out of here. Look at your name and say, I am unapologetically anointed. I'm not apologizing for the grace of God that's on my life. If you intimidated, that's your fault. Go grab you a sack of identity. I'm shot. Because I'm not apologizing for who God called me to be. So your Bible would tell you that he comes to him by night. He says, we know you are master teacher uh, sent from God because can't nobody do what you're doing uh, except God be with him. And Jesus said, uh, uh, if that sound real good right there, Jesus said, uh, I ain't got time to play with y'all. Uh, we in the last hour. He says, except you be born again. Because uh, 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 see, that's your problem. You're preaching, but you ain't saved. Uh, except you be born again. Uh, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Pastor Millsap, what I'm understanding is some of the most unsaved people are preaching to us every Sunday. We mastered the runs, we mastered the hollering, we mastered the modulation, but we ain't mastered our seek, Hasha. Because see, preaching got a way of stealing your seek. If you ain't kept, oh God, I wish I could talk in here. I'm going to say that again. Preaching got a way of stealing your time with God. Because you would get so caught up trying to preach that you forget that he called you to preach. And whatever he want to say to his people, he'll give it to you. But you got to, hi young soul, you got to make sure you stay on your face. So you know what happens, he says. He says to Nicodemus, he says to Nicodemus, he says, you got to be born again. And Nicodemus says, how can a man be born again? I appreciate you, Pastor Millsap. And that lady Millsap, we on our way out of here. How can a man be born again when he is old? Oh, yeah, sure. I'm too old to change. That's what he said. I shot. And some of y'all, God can't do nothing else for you uh, until you admit that you ain't too old to change. Uh, I don't care if you're a thousand sitting in here uh, with somebody else's teeth in your mouth. You ain't too old uh, to change. I tell you, uh, I'm almost ready, Joseph. So your Bible tells you that. Uh, he says, you got to have a He said, he said, except you become obedient uh, as a little child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to be, he said, you got to have a whole shot. Uh, you got to admit you didn't learn right. Uh, here was the problem in the church. We are dealing with people that are coming to our churches and don't want to be converted. They don't want to admit that I didn't learn right. They don't want to admit that a lady, I don't know how to be a mama. Teach me. They don't want to admit that pastor, I don't know how to be daddy. Teach me. He said, you got to be converted. So you know what happens? You know what happens? He, he leaves him and he says, he said, he said, I'm never gonna shy. This conversation birthed the destiny of God, Chris. In this conversation, I shall uh, Jesus revealed to Nicodemus why he came. He told Nicodemus, You think I came to steal your members? I don't care nothing about your members. Uh, uh, Pastor Neil said, I know you know what it's like uh, to go to other people's churches and they be intimidated by the grace uh, that's on your life. But I didn't come to steal nobody. But Jesus said, I don't your folks and I didn't come down here to do ministry. I came down here to do destiny. There's a difference between ministry and destiny. And you can do a whole lot of ministry and miss destiny. I'm almost going to y'all. So your Bible will tell you. Your Bible will tell you. He says, he says, he said, I'm a shut up. He says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And I'll be lifted up from the earth. I'll draw all men unto me. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son. That whosoever, see, it don't even move y'all no more. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish. 
average but have everlasting life. He sent not his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And then he asked Nicodemus this. He said, do you believe that? And then in the next chapter, your Bible will tell you. I'm rounding third down. Your Bible will tell you that in the whole Shabbat, chapter number four, that's where I'm at. He, your Bible will tell you that now Jesus is baptizing at the Jordan with John the Baptist and the Pharisees. How be it, it was not Jesus baptizing, it was his disciples. And you know what happened in Shabbat? The Holy Ghost drove him out of his comfort zone. You can't tell me that the hand of God is on your life. If it ain't ever drove you to a place that's uncomfortable, you can't tell me that God is using you. If he ain't ever drove you to call your daddy back that abandoned you, you can't tell me. Oh God, y'all ain't gonna say nothing, but I'm a preacher. You can't tell me that I love something. You can't tell me the hand of God is on your life and he has not driven you. Tell your name with the reason I'm so anointed. It's because God took me some places that I did not want to go. He put the car in park and said, we ain't going nowhere till you work that out. Oh, shy. I want to thank God while I'm here. I want to go on here and thank God that God didn't let me, oh, shy, just pass by stuff that I needed to deal with. Because see, the reason God is dealing with you like that, that means you have a great destiny. And God said, I can't have nothing coming back from your past to hinder you when you get to the place of God. Why do you think David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You know why he was able to say that? It's because he got everything right with everybody that had a problem with him. Oh, you ain't got to have a problem with anybody. But if you know they got a problem with you because of your destiny, oh, this getting quiet now. You are mandated to get there. You got to get that right. So your Bible says, your Bible said that the Holy Ghost drove him. It drove him to the wilderness. And when it drove him to the wilderness, it keep, keep me hot, preacher. And when it drove him to the wilderness, your Bible said, uh, it drove him to the wilderness, not for a congregation. It drove him to the wilderness for one woman. And it was the wrong woman. She wasn't saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. This woman had been married five times. Had messed up people's houses. The women of the city was talking about her. Is there anybody who shut up? Well, every woman that was born a woman, because you got the ex now. Every woman that was born a woman, wave your hands in the air. Is there any one of y'all living here that knows what it feels like to have other women be jealous of you? Holler back at your boy real quick. That's who Jesus came for. He came that didn't nobody like Osha because of what, uh oh can I say this to y'all not fight me huh? the reason women are jealous of other women huh, is because they're, the woman that they're looking at huh, is the woman with the influence Hasha, huh? and, the Hasha, huh? and because corner women I ain't talking to you yes, if you say huh? because corner women huh, are inherently jealous huh? they don't know how to tell another woman you look good girl huh? you, you got it going on huh? I like your hair even if you know it. I shot. I'm going to shot. Show me where you got it from. Do me a favor. Yell at your sister. Say, I ain't jealous of you. Tell her, I love you, girl. Okay, so I'm about to get out of here. You see that? You see that? I shot that. So look what happens. Look what happens. I'm going to get into the Bible a little bit. Look what happens. He comes. He comes. He comes after this woman. And now your Bible says, when he comes to this woman, she's at the well at noon. He see begins to he begins to have a theological debate with her. Maybe God, I ain't trying to stop right here. But maybe this woman huh, was always by herself because huh, she had never met nobody that could conversate on her level. Huh? I am the Hushada, huh? Because there were some people in here, men and women. Huh? We don't want to just talk about sports. We don't want to just talk about we we got some education huh? and we want somebody that can connect with us in Intellectually, how y'all shut it out? Tell your neighbor, I ain't stupid. And I don't want nobody stupid either. You shut up. After you get through telling me I look good, and after you get through telling me I'm fine, can you balance this checkbook? After you get that shut up, I shut up. After you get that more shut up. After you get through going out to eat, I shut up. After you're shut up, after you get through, who me I'm shut up? Taking me to the movies. Teach me how to do my credit. I need more than surface. God, I got to get out of here so 
woman, when he talks with this woman, a lot of y'all ain't like it, this, but I'm going to get to the Bible. You, you can join in in a minute. You, I'm a whole shot. He, he gets to this woman and he begins to talk to this woman. When he begins to talk to this woman, he discovered that this woman has had five husbands. And the one that she was with now being him, uh, it's not even her. It was like talking about her, her sleeping around with everybody. It was talking about her jumping from God to God. Because because we like to preach it like she was a loose woman. But she wasn't loose. She was just trying to figure out who was really real. Who was really authentic. And now, now Jesus said, I'm standing in front of your face. And if you knew the gift of God and who it was that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him for living water. And he would have given you something to drink. Your mind would go and tell you that he ministered to this woman to the point that she came to get something to drink and left for field. She didn't leave field, she left for field. Because the words that he speak, they are spirit and they are life. So you know what happens, y'all, in the Bible. Jesus begins to walk through his ministry. And as he's going through his ministry, I shut up. He's approaching the dead. Yeah, in chapter number five, he deals, he deals with something else. Chapter six, and then if you keep on going, he deals with the woman that was caught in adultery, and he sets her free. He deals with a man that was born blind from birth, and he sets him free. And now, then your Bible then begins to tell you that he's under attack because of his ministry. Then in chapter ten, your Bible will tell you he begins to tell them that he is the good shepherd. Ashanda, this is what I love about God. He's in heaven. Good. He ain't got to be good to you. He's good for you. I'm sure that even on a bad day, God is still good. And then you know what he says? He says to all of us in here, I'm the good shepherd. Everybody that came before you was a thief and a robber. The only reason they came into your life was to see about, was to take from you illegally. And I wonder, is there anybody in here uh, that they got to a point where you need revival? Uh, because all these thieves and robbers uh, that came and took your joy, uh, that they came and took your strength and your inspiration. Uh, uh, so the Bible says this. He says, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, yeah, he begins to talk about all of that stuff. Uh, and they try to stone him. Uh, so now in John chapter 11, as I hasten to my close, uh, John chapter 11, we come up now. Uh, he's about two from dying. And he, he says, he says now, I have to perform my greatest miracle, but I have to deal with somebody who they got relaxed with me. My greatest miracle has to come to the people that they're not comfortable with me. And your Bible will tell you that God begins to deal with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And your Bible will tell you that while Jesus is out there chilling, uh, all of a sudden one day he gets a message. Uh, a messenger comes from the house uh, of Mary and Martha. That what y'all got to understand uh, about Mary and Martha. Come on, Charlie. Uh, y'all got to understand about Mary and Martha uh, is that Mary and Martha needed Lazarus. Uh, but if you read your Bible, uh, Mary and Martha's daddy could not work uh, because he was a leper. Oh, uh, he was not dead. He just was a leper. Uh, and because he was a leper, he was on house arrest. So you know what had to happen? Lazarus was the breadwinner. Lazarus was the one that had to go to work. And while Lazarus was working, Mary and Martha was in the house just chilling. Mary was getting ready to get married. But then Lazarus got sick, y'all. Lazarus, yes, come on, quick. Lazarus got sick, y'all. And when Lazarus got sick, your Bible would tell you. Come on here, Charlie. Your Bible will tell you that they sent messages and they sent Jesus. They tried to manipulate Jesus' emotions. This is what I like about Jesus. He has emotions, but he's not emotional. You have to be so very careful that you don't step into a spirit of witchcraft and start trying to manipulate God and other people with your emotions. So your Bible will tell you Stop! <laughs> 
people. And you know who it begins with? You know what it begins with? I, I'm an apostle of the Lord's church. My, my sermon as an apostle is to leaders. The expectation has been lost out of the preacher. You can tell when a preacher is preaching and he didn't lost his fire. You can tell when the preacher is preaching and the glow that used to be on the ain't on no more. Because this is not what I expected. But I'm still expecting. There are some things that have happened to us. And according to scripture, the things that have happened to us have fallen out for the furtherness of the gospel. If Lazarus would not have died, even though they were not expected it, if he would not have died, then that his death, birth, and expectation in his sisters. There is no expectation without a letdown. You know, because I like to teach and then we're going to go home. What happens is people come to your church and they can they come and their stuff is already dead. So what they do is what they do is they project on you. They project on you. Watch out. Fight you. And they look at you while you're preaching faith. Come out. It's going to get better. You preach to them. You lay hands on them. They fall out on a strong emotion. They get up out the church. And they still want to talk about it. You know why? You know why? You know why? You know why? Because they are the stone. Me a favor. Yes, Lord. If you could look at your neighbor one more time and say, if you could ever get out your own way, yeah. oh, God gonna use you. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nobody in your way. Ain't nobody hating on you. You gotta get out your own way. There's a movie that I don't know. What kind of movie? There's a movie that I like to watch. It's called Meet the Robinson. You know what I'm saying? That? And, uh, there's a character in it that reminds me of the saints. His name is Goob. Goob, he's the dude in the black with the hair. Goob was, um, he was in the little adoption agency. And the reason he was so evil was because of his outlook. Not because people were mean to him, but because of his outlook. Because he was, he was talking in the movie, he was like, they all hated me. They were against me. And everybody was inviting him. Hey, Goob, you want to come over after church? You want to come over to my house? You want to play baseball? And, but, but because he was so caught up in his own personal drama, don't nobody like me. Everybody against me. Come on, go to eat with us. Sir. You coming to the prayer meeting? Don't nobody at that church like me. I don't even know why I'm in true way. Projecting because we stand in our own way. We stand in our own way. And even after a word is released, we still question it. Jesus released the word and he says, uh, Show me later. They showed him. They ain't got no problem taking you. They ain't got no problem taking you to the dead spot. They, they, they think that you're going at a grieve over it and talk about it. All right, this is where it's at. Move that out the way. Lord, that's no state now. Well, I think that's a lie. We keep dead stuff alive by talking about it. Some of y'all are 879 still talking about it. 
Real high your mama one day. You got great, great, great grandchildren. And you keep it alive by speaking over it. You, you, do you know? Do you know to talk about something dead or to talk about something that's beneath you is to bless it? That's what it means to bless the Lord. That means to speak over. It. So you are anointing your past by continuously talking about it. Everything you can't let go is still living. gone now for about eight years. I don't talk about him no more. I love him. Miss him. But if I was kid, if I was still talking about my daddy like he alive, he would still be alive in my mind. Yeah. So my depression would be I'm still going to look for him because he's alive in my mind. Yeah. If you talk about something long enough, it becomes real to you. Oh God. And you'll think God talking to you, but it's you. Then you'll start seeing things and saying it's God. Jesus said, I'm sick of this church keeping this stinky stuff alive. Move it out the way. Get out the way. That's what he's saying. If I was from North Memphis, I'd be like, get your mug out the way. You know what he said? When they moved it out the way, he called me. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Come forth. Come forth. In other words, if you really wanted it back, you didn't have to complain. The only thing you had to do was ask me. Joseph, when it came out, when it came out, we discovered why it was in there. Because when it came out, he was tired of you know what happened? You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Yes, sir, that's good. All these people, all these cantankerous people that comfort you in your sorrow, that's good. they help you wrap it up. Yeah. Wow. That's good. That's good, sir. I was talking to my son when we were driving on the way up here. I was talking to him up here. I said, we run into more dysfunctional people than functional people. Yes, sir. The world is full of dysfunctional people, and then every now and then you'll see somebody functional. I'll be like, hmm. That's what life looks like. And because, watch this, watch this, because you think, because they're dysfunctional like you, then both of y'all think y'all hearing from God. We have conversations about stuff we can't find in the Bible. Yeah. I like doing this better. So he said, he said, he said, uh, he said, he said, everybody that puts something on him, loose him. Get it off of him. Get it off of him. He didn't tell the grave clothes to fall off. He said, no, they didn't get on there by themselves. You know what Jesus was actually doing? Everybody that put their mouth on you and your wife and is trying to find the ministry. You know what he says? He shows up for restoration and he says, he says, loose him. You know why he says loose him? Because he wanna watch everybody that had a part in it come up and take it off. So he knows who the favor. Get on until he died. 
And he wakes up and he's like, I wasn't like this when I died. Lazarus believed Jesus. That's why he was able to get up. But you know what happened? You know what happened? You know what happened when he when he woke up? He discovered that something was on him that wasn't on him before he died. So when he come hopping out, he was like, I really want to walk out. Come on, son. But I don't know how this stuff got on me. Wow. And God said, let me show you. Loose him. And he started seeing all of his so-called friends. Wow, son. Coming to take stuff off of him. Yes, sir. And you know what the real lesson is? Everybody that takes something off of you, don't go back to them. Yes, sir. I promise you I'm here to help you, sir. What if what if Pastor Bill say I ain't bad? He just looked bad because what you put on him. <laughs> what if your little lady ain't bad? But what if she look bad because of the stuff you put on? The character of your leader is defined by its members. Because they don't know us like that. He loose Lazarus. And now we see Lazarus sitting with him eating. This is not what I expected. Part of it is probably he didn't expect to still be doing it 17 years later. Because if Pastor Bill said, let me be something, they like me, amen, at least once, once a month, we quit. He said, you got a wife, you're going to back. They sound like me, but I know they're getting on your nerves. It's going to be all right. I got to quit and I get my dogs like <laughs> like blue bell on my own. This this is this is not and then watch this, this is not what I expected. That that God would trust me with evil. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The highest form of honor is for God to trust you with another individual. So it's not what I expected, but I'm expecting. I'm expecting. Can you do me a favor as I hand this mic over? Look at your neighbor and say, I don't know what happened to you unexpectedly. But I'm expecting that everything is going to be all right with you. Tell him by the end of this week. Clap your hands, church, and give God praise. Let's stand. All over the building, let's stand. Let's stand. Let's stand. Let's receive our great leaders. Let's stand. 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 Let's stand.